Hi, right, it's Todd with Kudus Industries. I'm going to show another video today about replacing the exhaust gas temperature sensor on a uh, Ford F-350. And the reason why I started looking at the sensor was because my check engine light came on. So what I did was I grabbed my scanner here and I plugged it in where it usually goes. Underneath, okay. Turn the key on, just to the on position. And then if you can see the screen here, I go through the codes and scan it. Okay. So I'm gonna to go to read codes, current codes, exhaust, gas, temperature sensor circuit, bank one, sensor two. Okay, so that's the sensor we're gonna go after today and replace that. Okay, there's, there's four exhaust gas uh, sensors on this truck. And um, this is the third one that I've replaced on here. And they, they all go bad. Actually, Ford has a problem with them. So uh, I've replaced sensor three and sensor four before. So now today we'll do sensor two. So I'll go underneath the truck and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so underneath the truck, I'm going to start counting these sensors. There's sensor one right there. I can point to it. You can barely see the wire up there. It's one. There's two. There's the one I'm working on. Now we're going to come back. The back. Underneath the frame rail. There's three right into the side. And then here's four. So we would sensor two. And what I did was I cut the wires off. I know it's a bad sensor, it doesn't matter. So I, I cut the end of the plug off, right? Here's the other end. You can see where the, the wires, the outer sheath was charred. So I just cut that off to get out of the way. And the reason why I did that was so that I can put a box wrench on there. This takes a 13 millimeter uh, box wrench. That's what I have here. And I've been spraying this down for about five days with some penetrating oil. This is croil. But I spray it around here every day. I would come out here once a day and just spray it. Now, if you don't have the opportunity to do that before you work on it, I would just spray it before you work on it let it sit for at least an hour or so. To try to get some oil in there. So I worked on this already. And... You got to work this very slowly. This is stainless. The uh, fitting itself is carbon steel, and stainless tends to gall um, as you try to loosen it. So you got to be very careful. So I use the box wrench, box wrench, like I said, and uh, I work it a little bit at a time. So this one's loose. I got it mostly loose out, and I started working it. So when it got tight, I would turn it back in until it was loose, spray a little penetrating oil in there, and keep working it. So I got a few more threads to come out, and I'll show you what I did here. Right there, it's kind of getting tight. Back it off a little bit, work it. Okay, get another grab on it. Right there, a little tight, working it. Okay, and that it just took me about 20 minutes to get this out, just working a little bit at a time because it got really tight. And then I would spray it and then work it a little bit. The worst, the last thing you want to do is have this break off. Once if this fitting breaks off inside of here, which happened to me on the fourth one, I had to drill it out and re-tap it in a really tight spot and uh, I got it done but it was, it was no picnic so okay so there we go we got the fitting out you can see on here the threads are starting to peel the threads off of this right there okay it actually this is softer than the stainless fitting in, in the pipe all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run tap in there to clean up the threads to put the new um, new sensor in and I'll show you that next Here's a new a new sensor. There's the part number in the bag, and the threads at the end here are actually metric. It's a uh, M12 by 1.25. So M12 it's a 12 millimeter diameter, and then 1.25 millimeters is a thread pitch. Okay. I have two taps. One's a plug. That one's a bottom. We'll go with the plug first. That'll clean up the majority of the threads, and the bottoming tap will allow us to re-tap the hole all the way down to the bottom. Okay, I'm ready to start tapping, so I'm going to take a little, little oil, spray it in there. And the first I'm going to use is my plug tap. The plug tap has the first few threads are tapered, so it starts easier. There's actually a starter tap, which is really tapered. So there's a plug. I'm going to start with this one first. Just 
start it by hand. And I got a just a little six inch presser wrench. This is a really tight spot. So I'm just gonna work it real nice and slow in here. Okay. Here. I don't want to put a whole lot of force on it. I just wanna tap it, back it off, clear the chips. Like that. important to fill the resistance back it off and just break it off the chip that goes up into the flutes on the tap. So we'll tap this all the way down to the end. I'll switch over to the bottom tap. Just real nice and easy. It's also important to try to use a newer tap. Use some dull taps. It makes it a lot harder. Alright, so I'm going to spray a little bit more in there. Okay, I got a fair amount of resistance on there, so I, I'm at the bottom. So I'm going to back it out all the way and I'm switch over to the uh, bottom tap just to get the last few threads at the bottom of the hole. All right, that's coming out really nicely. Okay, there's our plug tap. I'll pull out the bottom tap so you can see the difference in that. Okay, the bottom tap is on the bottom, and the plug tap is on the top. And if you look at the threads, you can see that the plug tap is a little bit more tapered. Probably has four, it's four maybe five uh, threads are tapered, and on the bottom tap, there's only two. Okay, so this is allow you to get all the way down to the bottom of the hole. So we're going to go in with that next. Okay, Let me spray a little oil on here. Just a little bit. Start in the hole wire. So somewhat of a fine thread, so you gotta make sure you pick up the existing thread and force it. force it there. If you force it, you can really cross thread and cause a big problem for yourself. So let's we'll take the bottom tap. Should go on pretty easy all the way down the last few threads just because we already ran the plug tap through there. And this is an M12 by 1.25 tap. Okay, feels like we're getting close to the bottom here. So that's, that's pretty much, that's it right there. That's the bottom. Back that out. And then put our new sensor in. Okay, before I put the new sensor in, I want to uh, blow this out just to make sure there's no chips or anything in there. So I'm gonna get a little blow gun here. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I have my new sensor, and I put a little bit of anisees on the threads. I used a uh, graphite-based anisees, but you could use nickel-based too. But what I did was I, I pushed the fitting up here so it's away from the sensor itself. And I put the anisees on real nice, and I'll slide it back down and thread it in here. That sensor bottoms out, and essentially this nut is just to hold it in place. We'll start that. Very nice. That's going in there beautifully. Freshly tapped hole. Okay, nice and that's tight. I'm going to leave that just a little bit loose. I'm going to route my wire over here. The connector is actually along the frame rail. So, just put that up. Put this up pretty high here. Top of here, just like that. Now, Again, it's 13 millimeter. I use a, a flare wrench just so I can get more leverage on there. So I'm gonna come out here, tighten that down. Now this does not have to be crazy tight, all right? 
don't, don't go crazy with it. So I'm just going to go snug it. There you go. Nice and tight. Okay. Nice and tight in there. Come over here. Put my hand behind the frame. And the plug goes on the bottom. You fill it. Here. Click in there. That's it. The last thing I'm going to do is clear the code. So I've got my scanner plugged in underneath the dash. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the truck to the on position. Start okay. Come back on here. I'll hit enter. Going into the system. Enter again. Okay, I'm going to erase codes. Yes. Okay, good. So we'll go back up to read codes. No fault. Excellent. Okay. Now the real test will be when we start the truck. Check engine light goes out, and I think we have a winner. Okay, I think that'll do it. Uh, if you have any questions, please message me. Otherwise, this is Todd with Gudis Industries signing off. Thanks.